Good morning and welcome to the AP Capstone AP Research Presentations, April 29th, 2021. And up first is Maddie Thylocker. And whenever you are ready. Hi, my name is Maddie Thylicker, and I did a study on how 21st century pop and classical music by Chopin would correlate with high school students' ability to multitask. So before I get started, I just want to explain a few things. So you have three main portions of your brain. The cerebrum is a portion that correlates with your mental, mental and your physical actions. So with this, this also includes your senses, and your senses are your sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. So going with hearing, when people hear certain frequencies in songs, it correlates with your emotions. So if you're happy, you typically listen to happy music. If you're sad, you listen to sad songs. And most importantly, if you're anxious or stressed, many people tend to listen to calming music. So with this, people play calming music, like classical or no music at all, during learning periods of time. So with many teachers, they play classical music in the background during silent periods of study. So this gets into my gap. So I have three main studies. Multitasking University Classroom, this is by Dr. Barak. She did a study with her college university and she basically just let the, her students listen to music while they, did, while they took a test. So with this test, she did not conclude if it was more beneficial for the students or detrimental for them. However, she just states that it's based off the person because everyone has different mental capacity. Going into my next study by Dr. Carrier, he basically did a study with three generations, which was net, ba net, boom <laughs> net gen baby boomers and millennials. And with this, he just gives them a variety of tests that kind of defines what multitasking is. And he does have a small portion of his study that is correlated with music. However, his is focused on the distribution of sound rather than just different types of genres. With his study, he did conclude that 70% of netgens are able to multitask with music. Going into my last study by Dr. Poyak, so with Poyak, he kind of just defines what multitasking really is. And with this, he looks at both females and males. And there's no really which gender is better at multitasking. It's more of just females have a variety of different tasks that they can complete, while males is just two strong tasks at once. So with this, I conclude that I'm going to do high school students in the current generation, which is Gen Z, and I'm going to compare pop and classical music to each other. And from these three studies, I conclude that I have to do an experimental design. So this gets into my research question of how does pop and classical music affect high school students' ability to multitask in honors math and honors English. So before I get completely started, I'm going to define a few things. So classical music is just music in the, um, in the time period of 1750 to 1820. Geogebra, this is just a block class that is both geometry and algebra 2. This is typically for students who are able to comprehend two separate subjects in one year. Multitasking, this is the ability to do more than one task. In my honors English classes, I use crossword, word searches, and unscramble. In my math classes, I use magic squares, sudoku, and finding the value. The optimal human decibel, this is how high a frequency can go before you cause hearing loss. With mine, I set it at 65 decibels, which is about a normal conversation. And then pop music. Pop music is just a genre of music of popular songs that have the most hits, that usually have good melody, catchy rhythm, and they're easy to remember. So from my studies that I looked at, especially Dr. Carrier's, I conclude that I have to have quantitative data. And with this quantitative data, what I did is I visited classes for seven minutes. I originally had 15, but with a time limitation, I reduced it down to seven. So once I had all of my consent forms turned in, what I did is I took the students who were participating and I sat them down and I gave them their puzzle that was correlated with their class. So the English classes had, or the English classes had, oh my goodness, <laughs> they had unscramble and the math students had find the value. So for the first week, I played pop music and this is the list of songs that I had, which is Holy, Kings and Queens, Lonely, Be Like That, If the World Was Ending, Imposition. This is the top 10 popular songs of November of 2020 and this is according to the Hot 100 charts. So going into my second week, I used classical music by Chopin. I used his Spring Waltz with Robert's study. He is number four of the classical artists. However, he is also number one for romantic classical composers. So with his Spring Waltz, many people tend to listen to this song specifically when they are in a period of stress. And so with this song, I chose this. So after the students were done with their puzzles, after the seven minutes were up, I took up their puzzles and I took the amount of correct answers over the amount of possible answers. All of my puzzles were around 95 to 98 possible answers. And then I compared and concluded my results to Jayon Rayu. He did a study with Gen Z and classical music, and he was trying to see if there was a correlation between the two. With his study, he states that there is no correlation because Gen Z has been accustomed to not pop music, or not classical music, but more to pop music. 
So I had two English classes. I had Honors English 1 and Honors English 2. This is a range of 14 to 16 year olds and I had a total of 25 students. For Honors Math, I had a total of three. I originally only wanted two. However, with the participation issue, I had to add a third class. I had Honors Algebra 1, Honors Algebra 2, and Honors GeoGebra. This is a range of 14 to 17 year olds and I had a total of 22 math students. So this is my first class I visited. This is my Honors English class. I had a total of 19 students. You can see on day three and day two of pop and classical music that the students kind of had a lower score because the puzzles were kind of difficult for them to see. However, with the purple line, you can see that there's a 36% compared to a 31 with the uh, classical music, so it's more beneficial for the pop music compared to classical. Getting into my second class, this is my Honors English 1. This one is a lot smaller than my first class. I only had a total of six students. They also were located in a different section. I took them out in the hallway compared to the first class, which is in their classroom, because they were a smaller section. So you can see on day three of pop music that there's a 21% compared to 42. They also struggled to see the puzzles. I don't think this is that big of an issue, because it still resulted with a higher pop music than classical music, which is kind of following the line of the rest of the classes. This is my third class. This is my Honors Algebra 1. I had a total of nine students. You can see that the students struggled on day one of pop music. They didn't really understand the puzzles, and with this class specifically, they focused on the Sudoku puzzle, which they didn't understand at all, compared to the find the value or the math squares. So with this class, you can tell that there's a very slight difference between um, pop music and classical music, just because they focus more on what they didn't know rather than what they did know. Getting into my fourth class, this is my Honors Algebra 2. They also struggled with um, the first day because they didn't understand. But with this class and my next math class, they mostly focused on the magic squares and finding the value compared to the first class, which focused on the Sudoku. I had a total of seven students, and it still resulted with a higher average for pop compared to classical. This is my last class I visited. This is my Honors GeoGebra. I had a total of six students. This is the most calm class that I had compared in my math classes. They were the students who did not participate. They were very silent during the time. You can see that with the first day they struggled, but they had the largest section because they focused on the puzzles they did know before they went to the Sudoku. And then when they went to the Sudoku, they tried their best, and they had majority of the answers correct. So with this, you can see that they have a higher average with pop music compared to classical music. So this is just all of my averages. You can see as the classes get more advanced that the students have a higher average with com um, their averages. I do think that the more mature the class is, the more able that they are to do the puzzles. They're able to multitask because they're quicker to think on their toes and they, are they work more efficiently. So initially, I thought that the English students and the math students would do better with the classical music based off of past studies. I also thought that the English students wouldn't do very well with the pop music. However, based off of my results, the students did better with the pop music compared to classical music, and the English students did better than the math students. So I did have a few limitations. I had a participation issue. I really wanted double the size that I had, but despite that, I, I feel like this offers more opportunities for larger samples in the future. I also had a small incomprehension of the math puzzles, which was seen with uh, Honors English or Honors Math 1. Uh, despite this, they still resulted with a higher average with the pop music compared to classical music, and I did try to explain to them the best that I could of how to do the puzzles. And time. As I stated earlier, I originally was going to do 15 minutes. However, with the result of not wanting to take up too much of the teacher's time and wanting the students to still have their classes, I resulted down to seven. I do think the seven minutes is beneficial because if they had the 15 minutes, they would have worked. They wouldn't have worked as hard. They would have taken more time to actually think about the puzzles, and they would have went back to the ones that they didn't know, and they would have focused on this. And in past researchers, they've showed that there's a correlation between Gen Z and pop music. So I do think that despite the small time limitation, it wasn't that detrimental to my study. So my new understanding, music does not cause a delay in academic performances. And not only music, but most importantly, pop music does not cause a delay. From the study, other studies, they said that classical music is more beneficial. However, from what I've concluded, pop music is more beneficial than classical music. Also, Gen Z has been accustomed to pop music. Going to Rebecca's study, she did a study with Ohio Research. And with this, they state that there is a correlation of how Gen Z has changed how music is perceived. So with pop music, it is more beneficial because this is what they have grown up around. In the 1800s, it was more of classical music is when it hit its peak. However, with 
pop, with pop and Gen Z, the students are more correlated with it. And since pop music is more efficient, I do think this could be implemented into silent class period times. So for future studies, I do think including other classes, other classes like science and history, or even advanced placement classes. I use honors classes because it gives you a wide variety of age groups, while with advanced placement, it's mostly with the older students. I also think science and history might be important to use. I use math and, science, or math and English because they're complete opposites, so I do think including those might be beneficial. A larger sample size, I think larger sample sizes will get a better understanding of what really what genre of music is really beneficial for students. I did have a small limitation, however, I do think this mine represents our community. Other music, pop music is just a variety of songs that have the most hits. It's not really one specific genre. I do think narrowing it down into jazz, rap, or country. I had many students during my process of asking if they could listen to country music rather than pop music, which I had to decline because it would have messed up my data. So I do think including a specific genre might be beneficial. Using younger, younger generations, Generation Alpha is the next generation after Gen Z, and going to Robert's study, he states that with the upcoming, upcoming generations that the Generation Alpha has been accustomed to classical music, which is one of the reasons why I chose Chopin is because with this study, they state that there's a correlation between the two. So I do think including Generation Alpha might be beneficial. And that is all. Thank you. All right, Maddie, how did the choices you made when designing or implementing your research method impact your research process? So uh, the choices I made, I originally was going to do the different sound, like the different waves, like the set louder the sound was. However, going upon other studies, I looked into it and I saw that comparing the two might be beneficial. So going into this, I think that with the change of it, I do think that, I'm so sorry, I repeat that twice. <laughs> I think that with my research, I'm sorry, can you repeat that, the ending of it? Sure. Uh, how did the choices you made when designing or implementing your, your research method impact your research process? Okay, yeah. So um, I originally was going to do the sound, the how, sound, how loud it was, but I reduced that down to the genres, and I set that as 65 decibels, which is based off of my past research. 65 was kind of just where the comfortable zone was. So with that, I also was going to do a different type of music. I wasn't really going to compare classical music. I was actually going to do um, like rap because it was more of a well-known genre. However, they stated that classical music is more beneficial. So I think that answers your question. <laughs> So uh, there's the gap that I had was high school students and Gen, and Gen Z, and then comparing pop and classical music. So with my gap, I think that with my study, it really shows that pop music is more beneficial. With other studies, they kind of just correlate to classical music and past generations. With past generations, it was more beneficial because that's what they've really grown up around, because pop music wasn't really a well-known genre of music. So I think with my gap that it helps to understand the idea that pop music can help students rather than classical music. Okay. Okay. What was the most important research skill you developed as a result of this process and how might you apply it in future endeavors? So I think the most important thing that I learned was how to sort of give research, like give a process to the students because I've had past experiments that I've done with other students that correlated with let's just get the experiment done and then we'll get finished with not really working with younger students than me so I think that really helps me understand really what what how to help other people to get a better understanding of what I wanted to do so I think with that I also think that really just gathering data because I was kind of struggling in the beginning of just really getting everything done, kind of with the puzzles and grading them and getting all of that correlated. So I think with that too, it kind of helps me. So I think for future references that this will help me in even in workforces because 
with my career choice, I'm going to be working with other people. So I think with doing that, it kind of helps me understand what is beneficial and what's detrimental and what can help me progress in my line of study. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to stay at the podium for a minute. Oh, at yes. this time, I would like to open the floor for any additional questions or comments. <laughs> yes, Brooke. So I know you said your sample size was not um, large enough. What yes. What is your like, ideal sample size? So I really wanted double what I had. I. I really wanted to use both, like all of the like all the students in the classes. So with my Eng like my honors English one class, I only had six, and there was about like 15, 20 -ish students in that class. So I was really hoping that they all would participate. I also had another class that I was going to use, but with the teacher being new, she didn't really want to let me use her class because of that. So really double what I had. So yeah. Anything else? Anyone else? Dominic. You had Yes. Did that meet um, sort of limit your requirements, though, if you put it together? Is that not how that would work? Do you know? I think that since they're two separate ones, because in statistics, you know, you have the two separate, you have two separate samples. So they're both under 30, so because I have 25 and 22, so since they're both under the theorem, then theoretically I wouldn't be able to. But if I had double the size, I do think it would be beneficial for that. Mr. Kinzer. Maggie, I just want to first of all compliment you. I also want to tell you that I think you have opened the door from a music research standpoint and brain study standpoint to future studies that have not taken place right now in peer reviewed documents. So kudos to you, and I think you have really set some revolutionary things for future research down, down the road here. Thank you. So thank you for doing that on behalf of music education. You're welcome. <laughs> I have a question, Maddie. Yes, ma'am. I actually have um, a couple. Do you think that, one, I would love for you to come in and, like, tell the kids what you found. Okay. If they were the subject. Yes. And, you know, and they are future capstone, you know, students. And so I would love, if you would be willing to do that sometime, of course. we'll work out of time. Um, but then another question that kind of goes on the same. It is, you know, interesting because all my life, of course, I have heard that classical music, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, and so I think you've thrown a wrench in, in all of that. So I'm curious if you were able to find anything or if you know about, did it matter that it was, you, because you know that they're like on Pandora or whatever, yeah. you can get like classical, like versions almost of pop, like they're instrumental versions of pop songs now. Does it matter if it is the original or if it's an instrumental version or the lyrics play a part or what are your findings on that? I do think it's mostly on the lyrics mm -hmm. because there were many, like when I was observing the students, there were a lot of them who were kind of just like nodding their head and they were kind of sort of singing the songs with it mm -hmm. while they were doing their puzzles. So I do think it's kind of more of on the lyrics rather than the instrumental pieces behind it. And I also noticed with the classical music, it was, it felt like a really long time. It kind of felt like double the amount of time that it normally was. So I think with the students, they're kind of just like, I don't like this anymore. I just want to get it done. So I really think it's mostly on the lyric part of it rather than the, the musical piece of it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Madison, thank you so much. Thank you.